Okay, here we have a model sent in by Joanne Risty. I have the final render that he provided as well. Joanne says, hello, Falygon. This email contains my model that I made based partially on a drawing a friend made and an anatomy reference book. I had textured the model and gave it hair. But there was always something that personally felt off about the model. I'm self-taught and there are no 3D schools to go to or other people that I can ask where I live. So thank you for the reply to the tweet and have a nice day. Awesome. Well, let's kind of take a look here. I'm going to throw your render off to the side and your, your kind of basic message there, just kind of saying you feel like something's off, but you don't really know exactly what that is. Let me run an auto groups on your head really quick. And I'm just going to split your head off as its own piece here. And you said that you used uh, an anatomy book as a reference and a drawing that a friend made. I would say that um, because you didn't provide the drawing that your friend made, I don't know how close you were to that. So I'll only speak about the anatomical differences that we want to see in this. So the first thing that I would do and recommend for you, instead of only using an anatomy book, I think what might be helpful for you, and I've recommended this before, but just to kind of reiterate so other people can see, I recommend you go up into your light box up here, under Tool, find the Ryan Kingsline Anatomy Model, and double click on that and open that up. And this will give you an awesome écorché 3D reference for some anatomy right here in ZBrush. So the, the first thing I thought when I saw your model was that there's obviously some stuff wrong here, quite a few things incorrect here. A lot that we would like to change, and it's mainly in the overall shape of your head, feeling kind of very ballooned up here, has this kind of very sharp, spiky shape going down, and then it kind of has the same kind of feeling here from the profile, kind of like Kingdom of the Crystal Skull shape, shape head going on here. So that combined with the flatness of your eyes, nose, ears, and lips being added onto the face kind of make it all feel off, right? And you'll get better at this with time. You'll be able to tell the tell like why things are feeling off instead of just having that weird itching feeling the more you do this. So it's really about practice and that's why I'm recommending this here so that you can get some good practice. And what's awesome about this model is that not only are all these muscles split up into separate subtools for us, but every single one is labeled, which is awesome for anatomical study. But specifically what we're going to do today is just grab the skeleton and specifically just the skull here. So I'm gonna grab the skull, grab all the teeth as well. And I'm just going to append this skull to your model. So let me click on append here, grab the skull, and transparency. Let's line this up with your model now. So let me go down here, size, make that a little bit larger, maybe a little bit too big. Now, you know what? Maybe not. Maybe not. We're not too far off here. But I think this will help you kind of get the basic idea in the earlier stages. So I think I'm going to line up my eyes with your eye cavity and then we can kind of go from there. So the skull, the bone of your face does not change. It will always be the same. There are variations in skulls, but for the most part you're going to see a lot of the same basic shapes. In this case what I'm going to do is just show you how you can use this skull as a reference for your head to get those most primitive basic shapes and get your head to stop feeling so wonky or off, right? So let's just let's just hide your eyeballs, your lashes, your, your accoutrements here and work on only the head. And this is a little high resolution, nothing to reconstruct. Let's just do a quick 1K Ziri mesh, grab a really large move brush, and I'll show you how you can do this. So what I've done here first, the important part is just lining up the skull with your head. I know this looks super derpy now, but it's fine. It's just gonna, gotta break some stuff to fix some stuff. Um, I've lined up your skull here, 
And what I'm doing is I'm turning on transparency mode and using a large move brush. You can even turn on ghost mode if it's easier to see or easier to manipulate. And I'm just using, like I said, a really large move brush and beginning to manipulate your geometry. Nothing too crazy here, just a big move brush and a helpful reference for you. So a thing that's hard that, and the reason why I'm recommending this is because when you're looking at a 2D reference and you're trying to recreate it in 3D, it's tough, right? And I'm, I'm sure a lot of you have experienced this. And that's why I'm, I'm recommending trying out a, a 3D reference. Not only is everything labeled and really well done in here, but it's just nice to be able to have that overlap that you can use and use as a great reference directly here in ZBrush, whether that be with transparency mode or if you just throw it off to the side and so you can rotate around it or you know whatever, whatever you personally want to do. So we'll rotate around to the profile again, go back to the transparency mode. I'm going to turn off ghost so we can start moving some of our larger shapes into position. So like I said, a lot of what's going on in your head is that it was feeling very flat. Um, if we roll back here, we can see that oh, all the way back to a sphere real quick. So your, your head is not only feeling misshapen, but the secondary forms that you've added on here are feeling very flat. And like the, the overall form of them is not affecting the shape of the head. But remember, if we kind of go back here and look at our skull, the shape of the nose, that bridge, is actually affected by the bony landmark coming down here. I mean, you can even feel it on your own nose if you put your fingers, just pinch your the bridge of your nose. There's quite a bit of a distance between the bridge of the nose and the flat of the cheek. Obviously, there's a lot of variation that can happen there, but for the most part, you know, this is the kind of stuff that I want you to pay attention to. And this is just, you know, one single thing that I'm pointing out here out of um, out of many. But I think this will be a good first step, get you headed in the right direction. I would say do exactly what I'm doing, just grab a move brush and start pushing, pulling some geometry around. Try to focus on those bony landmarks where uh, it really affects the shape of your form. And I think that'll be a good step for you moving forward. But just to kind of show you what we want to do here, I'm just dynameshing, remeshing all of this, and really just trying to get back to that most basic level. So for example here, if we go back, turn that back off, we want to start pushing in around the eye sockets. You know what, I'll do this. Let me roll back here to yours and then duplicate so now we can reference that a little bit more quickly. So if we look at yours, the eye socket where the eyes are placed is just really far forward and it's not really feeling like there's much of a brow ridge or eye socket there at all. So really think about the shape of the skull and these bony landmarks right now. That's what I'm doing. I'm starting to push in around that skull, give some more room for some of this around the nose. There's some more room there and we'll just kind of push and pull and Continue to move this stuff around one step at a time. But this is, again, the bony landmarks. Focus on that. Take it back a step. And I think that'll be some good next steps for you. And then from the profile, this was feeling very wide up towards the top. Kind of feeling a little, like I said, balloony shape, Kingdom of the Crystal Skull-esque. So just kind of boxing that out a little bit, pushing in here and there. Placement of the ears is just incorrect here, and the shape feels a little bit awkward. They feel like they're kind of falling off the head almost, so that's something that I would take a look at as well. I think it really becomes obvious if you look at, try to look up some profile references, and you'll be able to see the distance here where the ear should be, and then you'll also be able to see how you should be able to get some more depth out of the corner of your eyes there. And most of that's just coming from the lack of eye socket and brow ridge here. But yep, like I said, all this stuff just kind of plays off together. I think, I think where this suffers the most is just kind of in your most basic shapes, starting to kind of, you know, if I just 
do it on this without dynameshing it really low. Starting to kind of square off some of that so the head doesn't feel so derpy. And then starting to work more so on kind of the bony landmarks and making sure that the facial features feel like they really belong here. This, these lips just feel like they're just slapped on real quick and the actual form is not, you know, actually affecting the face, which is something that we want to see or else it's going to feel, like you said, off. All right. Cool, cool, cool. I think that'll be enough to kind of push you forward on this. Wish you luck, Joanne, and I can't wait to see what you end up doing with this. Shoot me a uh, shoot me a tweet when you're done with it. You made all your your fixes and changes and such. All right.